Imagine unearthing a creature so alien, so anatomically baffling, that over 60 years later, scientists still have no idea what it actually is. A torpedo-shaped body, a rigid trunk ending in a clawed, tooth-lined appendage, and most bizarre of all, two eyes perched on opposite ends of a horizontal bar, like a biological dumbbell sticking out of its face. It sounds like science fiction, but this thing was real. This is Tullimonstrum gregarium, better known as the Tully monster. Just 15 to 35 centimeters long, yet it's one of the most mysterious fossils ever discovered. Not because of its size, but because it refuses to fit anywhere on the tree of life. The story doesn't begin with a major expedition, but with an amateur fossil hunter named Francis Tully. In 1955, while exploring the spoil piles of a coal mine in Mazon Creek, Illinois, Tully uncovered a strange fossil in an ironstone nodule, one that didn't match anything in the reference guides. He brought it to the Field Museum in Chicago, where even the experts were stumped. Eugene Richardson, curator of fossil invertebrates, eventually gave the creature a name in 1966, Tullimonstrum gregarium, in honor of its discoverer. But this wasn't just another odd fossil. These creatures swam through shallow brackish waters approximately 309 to 307 million years ago during the Pennsylvanian period of the Carboniferous, more than 100 million years before the first dinosaurs appeared. This was a time when what is now Illinois sat near the equator, covered by a vast tropical sea interspersed with river deltas teeming with life. The Tully monster's preservation is equally remarkable. Most soft-bodied creatures disappear from the fossil record entirely, their tissues decomposing long before fossilization can occur. But in Mason Creek, rapid burial in iron-rich sediments created perfect conditions for capturing even the most delicate anatomical details. These exceptional preservation conditions produced siderite concretions, iron carbonate nodules that, when split open, reveal beautifully detailed impressions of creatures normally lost to time. What makes the discovery particularly striking is its abundance. While many mysterious prehistoric creatures are known from just a handful of specimens, paleontologists have now recovered more than 1,500 Tully monster fossils. In fact, they've become so emblematic of Illinois' prehistoric past that in 1989, Tully Monstrum was declared the state's official fossil and even appears on some Illinois license plates. And yet, after all those specimens and decades of study, scientists still can't agree on what it actually is. Not bad for something barely the size of a banana. Let's start with the most obvious feature. Its elongated, torpedo-shaped body reaching 15 to 35 centimeters in length, roughly the size of today's large trout. The body appears segmented, like an earthworm, but with more intricate internal structures. This segmentation immediately confused scientists, since it shows up in many unrelated animal groups. But it's at the anterior end where things get truly bizarre protruding horizontally from what we might call the head region is a rigid bar-like structure, almost like a horizontal broomstick, with fully functional eyes positioned at each end. Imagine your eyes perched on the ends of a dumbbell extending sideways from your face, and you'll begin to appreciate just how bizarre this arrangement is. No living creature sports anything remotely similar, making it a unique feature in the entire animal kingdom. As if that weren't strange enough, extending forward from the body is perhaps its most distinctive feature. A long, rigid proboscis ending in what appears to be a claw-like structure lined with small teeth. This appendage makes up nearly a third of the creature's total length and was clearly prehensile, likely used for capturing prey or manipulating objects. The tooth-lined claw bears superficial resemblance to the radula of mollusks, the jawless mouths of primitive fish, and even the grasping appendages of certain arthropods, adding further confusion to its classification. 
Completing this anatomical enigma is a thinned tail region that, ironically, represents one of its most conventional features. The tail appears somewhat paddle-like, suggesting the creature was an active swimmer rather than a bottom dweller. Internal features only deepen the mystery. Some fossils show a rod-like structure interpreted by some as a notochord, others hint at gill pouches or a digestive tract. But every new detail seems to spark more debate instead of clarity. What makes Tullamonstrum's anatomy particularly confounding is that it combines features found in different animal groups in ways that don't follow any clear biological pattern. It's as though someone had access to nature's parts bin and assembled a creature using components that weren't meant to go together. Yet somehow, this improbable arrangement worked well enough for the Tully monster to thrive in its ancient ecosystem. The alien anatomy of Tullamonstrum leads to an equally fascinating question. How did this bizarre creature actually live? While behavior doesn't fossilize directly, the Tully monster's unusual physical features offer compelling clues about its lifestyle and hunting strategies. That distinctive proboscis ending in a toothed claw wasn't just for show. Its structure strongly suggests a predatory lifestyle, with the long appendage likely serving as both a sensory probe and capture device. Like the extendable jaw of a dragonfly nymph or the lightning-fast strike of a mantis shrimp, the Tully monster's proboscis was almost certainly its primary hunting tool. But exactly how did it deploy this bizarre apparatus? The most plausible scenario paints Tullamonstrum as an ambush predator, using its relatively small size and possibly translucent body, like many modern marine animals, to stay hidden in the water column. When prey drifted too close, it would snap into action, extending its proboscis to grab the victim with its tooth-lined claw and pull it back toward its body for consumption. The unusual eye placement on the horizontal bar also suggests specialized hunting behavior. With eyes positioned at the extreme lateral edges of its body, the Tully monster would have enjoyed nearly 360 degree vision, a significant advantage for detecting both prey and potential predators in its murky estuarine environment. This arrangement might have allowed it to spot movement above, below, and to either side simultaneously, a visual superpower that few modern animals possess. Its swimming capabilities, while not exceptional, were likely sufficient for short bursts of speed. The torpedo-shaped body and finned tail point to a creature that moved through the water with lateral undulations, similar to many fish and aquatic salamanders. Whether it was capable of sustained swimming or preferred to drift with currents remains unclear, but its body form suggests it was at least moderately agile in the water column. As for its diet, the size and structure of its proboscis suggest it likely fed on small to medium-sized prey, perhaps smaller fish, crustaceans, or soft-bodied invertebrates that shared its habitat. The tooth-like structures were well-suited for gripping slippery or struggling prey, but not for crushing shells or tearing into larger animals. There's also the intriguing possibility that it might have been a specialized feeder, perhaps even parasitic, using its unusual proboscis to extract fluids or soft tissues from other creatures. While less likely than the predator hypothesis, this behavioral model can't be entirely ruled out given its unusual anatomy. One thing seems increasingly clear. Despite its modest size and bizarre appearance, the Tully monster was no passive filter feeder or simple detritivore. This was an active hunter with specialized adaptations for capturing live prey. A fearsome predator in miniature whose hunting prowess belied its comical appearance. In the complex food web of the Carboniferous Seas, Tullamonstrum had carved out a predatory niche all its own, wielding its improbable anatomy with deadly effectiveness. The alien world it called home, the Carboniferous Period, between 359 and 299 million years ago, was marked by dramatic environmental shifts and bizarre life forms that would be utterly unrecognizable to modern humans. When the Tully monster hunted its prey around 309 to 307 million years ago, 
the landmass we now call Illinois, sat near the equator. A tropical, coastal environment, nothing like today's American Midwest. Global oxygen levels reached an astonishing 35% compared to today's 21%, allowing giant insects to thrive. Dragonflies with two-foot wingspans and millipedes the size of cars. But it was in the shallow seas where Tullamonstrum made its home. These weren't the deep, blue oceans we know today. Rather, imagine extensive shallow brackish waters, murky estuaries and deltas where rivers met the sea. The water would have been relatively warm, rich in nutrients and teeming with life. This environment created perfect conditions for the Mason Creek ecosystem, one of the most extraordinarily preserved fossil sites in the world. The Tully Monster shared these waters with a remarkably diverse community of creatures, many as bizarre as itself. Swimming alongside Tully Monstrum were primitive sharks like Bandringa, with its extraordinarily elongated snout, and cartilaginous fish such as Escanichthys apopyris. The waters teemed with jellyfish, including Octomedusa, sea cucumbers, and countless shrimp, bivalves, and polychaete worms. What makes the Maison Creek fossil assemblage particularly fascinating is that it preserves both aquatic and terrestrial organisms, the latter having been washed into the marine environment from nearby land. Among these land dwellers were massive millipedes like acanthopests, early amphibians, and primitive plants, painting a complete picture of this ancient ecosystem. Within this complex food web, Tullamonstrum likely occupied a middle predator position. It was probably too small to threaten the larger sharks and fish, which may in turn have preyed upon it. But it would have been a fearsome hunter to smaller crustaceans and soft-bodied invertebrates. Its unusual anatomy suggests it may have exploited a specialized feeding niche, perhaps hunting in ways or targeting prey that other predators couldn't, allowing it to thrive despite the competition. The Carboniferous seas were filled with bizarre life forms. Some, like the Tully monster, vanished entirely. Others, like early sharks, would persist through time. This rich ecosystem, with its balance of predators and prey, likely shaped Tully monstrum's unusual anatomy. What makes this world especially remarkable is how well it was preserved. Organisms that died in these waters were quickly buried in iron-rich, low-oxygen sediments, preventing decay. This formed siderite concretions that captured even soft tissues in stunning detail, creating a rare paleontological time capsule into this ancient environment. Within the complex food web of the Carboniferous Seas, the Tully monster carved out a niche that helps explain its bizarre anatomy. It lived in shallow, murky, estuarine waters where visibility was low, making its horizontal eye bar ideal for panoramic vision, crucial for spotting prey or predators in all directions. Its long proboscis ending in a tooth-lined claw suggests it fed by ambush, striking quickly at nearby prey in poor visibility. Much like a chameleon's tongue or a goblin shark's jaw, this rapid, targeted extension gave it a major advantage. Its torpedo-shaped body and fin tail indicate it was an active swimmer, but likely relied more on hovering and sudden bursts of speed than long chases. At 15 to 35 centimeters long, Tullamonstrum was a mesopredator, both hunter and prey, feeding on smaller animals while avoiding larger fish and sharks. Its unusual traits don't align neatly with modern taxonomic groups, which may explain why it's been so difficult to classify. Whatever it was, its features were clearly well suited to its environment. Environmental data from Mason Creek suggest the waters were warm, brackish, and seasonally variable, conditions that likely favored adaptable species. With over 1,500 fossils recovered, Tullamonstrum wasn't a rare anomaly. It was common, successful, and perfectly suited to a world far stranger than our own. From obscure fossil to scientific icon, the Tully Monster has become Illinois' state fossil, a museum star 
and a symbol of prehistoric mystery. Its bizarre anatomy, uncertain classification and pop culture appeal make it both a scientific puzzle and a reminder that some of nature's strangest creatures were entirely real. But for all its strangeness, the Tully monster was far from the most terrifying thing in its world. In our next video, we reveal the true monsters of the Carboniferous, the ones that didn't just look strange, but hunted like nightmares. Click here to watch it. And as always, this is Roaring Echo. Thank you for watching.